Alrighty guys, welcome back, it's Professor Hank, and in this video we're going to talk about how you can return from functions in C++. We're going to cover the primary use of the return statement, or the primary way, primary purpose of returning from a function, which is to terminate the function, and the second, the secondary purpose, which is to be able to uh, return a value from a function. Right? A lot of times students will well, they, they always remember the, the secondary purpose, but they, but they usually forget the, the primary purpose. So let's go ahead and dig into it, shall we? Okay, so when you talk about returning from a function, I mean, really what you mean is that the function's over, all right? You've, the, the, the function has finished executing, and you return back from where the function was called. So if we have a function that looks like this. We'll do something like, you know, call it foo. You know, just something silly. And you have a bunch of statements in your function, right? You can have as many, you know, whatever you need inside your function. And so we say hi by, for example, All right? So we're gonna call that function in main, okay? And that's gonna execute. What's gonna happen? As soon as we make that function call, okay? Then we jump up to our foo function and we start executing statements in there, right? So the first see out statement happens, we see high on the screen. The second see out statement happens, we see by on the screen. Then we reach the end of the function, that closing curly brace. So at that point, we return from the function. We return back from whence we came, right? Which is the function call. And then the rest of the main function continues executing. So, you know, you might have another statement here that says, you know, goodbye. Okay, so when that function finishes executing, you know, you return from the function. Okay, so we'll we'll see uh, an example, right? So that's the most basic definition of returning from a function, I guess you could say. But if we add this thing called the return statement, right? We have this keyword, keyword return. Okay, that allows us to do a couple things. One thing it allows us to do, its primary purpose is to return from a function right that's that's what the, what's in the name now if we just use it by itself and you look at that keyword right if we use it in its own statement so something that looks like this we can terminate a function early we can return from a function early so what does that mean it means we can do something like this we could say return semicolon and now the function won't make it all the way to the closing curly brace Right? As soon as the return statement executes on the light 11, that's it. We go back from whence we came. We return to the function call. So when we call this, or when we run the program and we call foo, we jump up to the foo function, we start executing statements, hi, and then we execute return. Well, as soon as we execute return, we go back from whence we came, which is the function call, and then we continue executing the rest of the main, so we see goodbye on the screen, and that's it. So this never executes. Right? because we already returned from the function. So this code is just sitting here doing nothing. It's, it's, it's pointless to have it in there, really, because it's never going to execute. Now, you might look at that and go, well, what the heck is the point of that? Why would I ever? That's kind of stupid. Well, in this case, yeah, it totally is, but it does have its uses. So let me um, give you an example from our textbook, for example. So what if this was a function that... Um, accepted a couple of arguments okay and it was going to you know display um, you got to do division okay so it's gonna do something like see out X divided by Y okay now when you call foo and you pass it three and two you know no no problems right so let's go ahead and close that and then re compile no problem right because you know three divided by two is 1.5 and then the function finishes, we return back from once we came, we display the goodbye, and we're done, right? Um, fine. Problem is, is that what happens if I was to pass zero as an argument, right? Well, now I'm trying to divide by zero, and bad stuff happens, right? So you see inf, right? So that's that doesn't make any sense, right? It's it's dividing by zero is not a thing, right? It's it's an undefined um, operation. So what we can do is, is we can 
use the return statement to make sure that that never happens. Okay, now just by itself, the way this is written, this is again, another kind of a stupid function because it wouldn't do anything. But if I do something like this, if I say, well, if y is equal to zero, right, then return. Okay, so now, you know, nothing that that function is not going to attempt to do any division at all because as soon as that test expression on line 10 executes, right, it's going to say, well, if y is equal to zero, well, in this case, that's true. So then we return. So the function's over. So this um, operation never occurs. This function statement here, this, this C out, this division by zero never has a chance to happen. So we just protected ourselves from that invalid operation. Um, you know, and then you could even, you know, do something like this. You could say, oh, well, you know, illegal can't divide by zero. You know, you might have a little C out statement in there. And you could say, um, let's put a little Thing there you could say see out you know error can't divide by zero you know so now you can also let the user kind of know well here's what the problem is you know and um, in that case you know the division by zero doesn't happen and we can execute something else right we can we can say error can't divide by zero so that protects you from having to get here we terminated the function early we returned early right we didn't execute this last little statement here so that's primary use of return statement um you know being able to return from the function so that's example one okay now here is example two um secondary purpose secondary purpose and that is going to be to return a value um, from the function okay so what we can do is we can add something we can have that return keyword and then we can have some kind of expression here okay and this expression can be carried back to main or back to the calling function so let's say we've got something like this all right so we'll have a function called bar and we'll have it accept as arguments two integers and then we'll have it um, calculate the sum of the arguments and then we'll return that sum okay so this is the expression um, now we can't use void if we're going to do that because void indicates see how that we got the squiggles there void indicates that this is a void function a non-value returning function so what we have to do if we want to actually return a value in this case that value is going to be the result of adding x and y together then we have to specify a return type all right so in this case what is going to be our return type well, x plus y, x is an integer, y is an integer, an integer plus an integer is an integer. Therefore, we're gonna need to return an integer. So now when we call bar, okay, let's say we just pass it um, one and two, okay? So right now we call bar, it'll do that, that one will be assigned to x and that two will be assigned to y and then this expression will add the one and the two and it'll, and it'll be three. So now when we go back, it's bringing the three back with it brings the three back with it now on its own that's not too impressive right I mean it looks like whoop to do just calling the function we didn't do anything with the three but it's there so what are we gonna do with that three okay it's as if this function call got replaced with the three okay so what we can do then is we can assign that three to another variable right so now when we call this function, the one gets copied to X, the two gets copied to Y, one plus two is three. So then when we return from bar back to once we came, that value that's returned by bar then gets assigned to X, right? So then we can do uh, C out X, okay? And then you'll be able to see that the value came back from the function. So there's the three. So that's known as a value returning function. Now it's important 
just like with arguments that and or just like passing arguments to a function it's important that you make sure that your return your return type matches up with what you're trying to return right so let's say that instead of returning x plus y i just returned 3.8 for whatever reason okay um you know the we're ignoring the arguments basically for this example okay now what's going to be assigned to um x okay we'll even change x to a float okay and uh, we'll get rid of this just so it's not as confusing okay all right all right okay so when this function executes it's going to return 3.8 so 3.8 is going to come back to the function call and then be assigned to x at least that's what we think so what should x show us 3.8 but there's no where's the point 8 what the heck what the heck is that check out the return type right so this 3.8 got returned as an integer return type is incredibly important and it's really easy i see students forget this all the time when they're first learning functions because it's it's an important detail but it's one that's easy to so it's, it's a logic error right it's one that that's easy to um, overlook if you're not paying attention or reading carefully or, or whatever so what we have to do is that that point eight got truncated because integers don't have decimal places so we have to match up the uh, return type with the type of value that we are trying to return right so we've got 3.8 being returned as a float, being assigned to a float variable. So now, beautiful. Okay, so you got to keep that in mind that your return type matches um, the type of value that you're returning, but also don't forget that you have to make sure that whatever value is being returned by that function gets stored as you need it to be stored. So for example, we're going to see the three again. Why? Because the 3.8 that was returned by bar got assigned to an integer variable. Okay, so integer variables can't hold decimal places. So the 3.8 got truncated at, at this point, at the assignment part. So the 3.8 got cut down to 3 at the assignment part. Everything was great here. Okay, but here's where we had our, our little failure. Okay, so your return type can be any kind of data type. Okay, so int, double, float, care, string, um, short, unsigned int, I mean, whatever, okay, um, that's a valid return type. Um, so keep that in mind that make sure that the value that you're returning matches the value that you're returning, or the, the return type, I should say. Return type matches up with what you're returning, and then also that you're assigning it to an appropriate variable back in uh, main. Okay, um, now, there is one other thing that I wanted to show you too, and that is, you know, that uh, another common mistake that I see students make. You can return one thing in functions in C++. I suspect this error that I see often is from people who first started learning how to program in Python where you can return multiple things. But, you know, int bar, Turn statement, it returns one expression, one, okay, not multiples. So what that means is, is that you can return, let's go ahead and change this to an end again. You can return five. You can return, you know, if we, just like we saw before, an expression, something that evaluates to a single value. Okay, you can do that. But what you can't do is this, and I see people do this all the flipping time. It's maddening to me, okay? And I suspect it's maddening to them too because especially when you're first learning, you're like, oh, look, this totally compiles. It's it's not a problem. The, the compiler doesn't care. It's, it must be correct then, right? Um, now look at what value was assigned to X, seven, right? Where'd the eight and six go? Don't know, right? You can only return one value, even though this is syntactically correct. It's, it's a logic error because only one value can come out. So what happened was the compiler just said, oh, we'll go with seven. That was the last one in this little list here. So that's what we're going to um, go with. And different compilers might handle that slightly differently. Um, you can't return a list of values. That's not a thing. It's not a thing. So, you know, don't do it. <laughs> you know, um, If you wanted to return multiple values, you'd have to do something else, which we'll cover in later videos. Uh, all right. So... 
that should be everything that I have for you uh, with regards to returning values from functions. Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine, you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video, feel free to drop me an email, stop by my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom online. For the rest of you, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down button as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. You can subscribe, you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. Leave a comment, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.